In this video, we are discussing VXLAN at its basic uh, format. Two types would be static uh, VXLAN, as well as we're going to talk about dynamic uh, VXLAN using eVPN. Now, when it comes to VXLAN, uh, we're talking about the overlay, which is technology here. That's an overlay. Utilizing the underlay, let us explain this. Underlay means there are three connectivities. So we will have had configured uh, OSPF in this case. You can review my video on OSPF configuration. I will leave the link for the um, OSPF config multi and single area in the uh, comments below, below the video. Now, coming back to this, so one way of doing VXLAN is doing static VTIP. So this is VTIP or virtual tunneling or VXLAN tunneling endpoints, VTIP1, VTIP2. And with the static, we will inform VTIP1 who is VTIP2. At the same time, we will inform VTIP2 or VXLAN tunnel endpoint uh, who is VTIP1. Now when it comes, so then the overlay will be formed and clients in the VLAN 13 will be able to communicate using the overlay. VLAN 13 only exists on the edge switches. With the, um, the case with eVPN, which is Ethernet VPN, we are using MBGP. Uh, MPGP, which is multi protocol BGP as a control plane, meaning we'll use MBGP to facilitate the discovery and the addition, the reachability between VTIPs. So VTIP1 will be able to reach VTIP2 and VTIP2 will be reached VTIP1 by the fact that MPGP will enable that. So that's going to be the control plane as MPGP. Now, if you add, say, for example, in the future, there's another VTIP or another edge device need to form uh, VXLAN tunneling with eVPN using uh, dynamic discovery, um, that new VTIP would be automatically discovered and added um, to the list of VTIPs that can communicate with each other. Again, remember, we're establishing layer 2 connectivity over layer 3. So that's an overlay over the underlay, underlay the OSPF. Now we will start with the clients. Client number one on the left hand side, that's the IP address. And client number two on the right hand side, that is the IP address. At this stage, to be quite honest, because the clients are in the same VLAN, we don't need to have a default gateway. So we need to verify the clients cannot bing each other. We will issue a bing command from one of the clients. You notice that the clients cannot bing each other. It can bing itself, of course, but it will not be able to bing its other client. The same applies here. The client cannot bing the other one, but can bing itself. So it can bing itself and cannot bing number 10 or dot 10. Now we will issue a continuous bing command. We'll come back, revisit the client um, once we uh, have configured. Uh, the v, uh, VXLAN. So as I said to you, these switches have already been configured with OSPF and if I issue the command show IP root OSPF, we're going to see equal cost multipath, they can reach each other and they are able to communicate with each other, there's, there's no issue. So switch one can reach, for example, the loopback interface of switch two, notice switch one or VTIP one can reach the loop back of this. Um, now we cannot of course bring VLAN 13 or there's no IP to VLAN 13. So we're gonna go and create VLAN 13 here, assign this port to it as the same uh, applies here. So what we're gonna do now, um, just to verify reachability, 10.00.2, we're able to reach the loop back interface from switch one or from VTIP one to VTIP two, the same applies here, then 0001, and that's a loop back interface for switch number one. So it means reachability is there. What we're gonna do, we're gonna start with creating VLAN 13, go to the config mode, VLAN 13, that's where the client is, and we would like to go to the interface and assign VLAN 13 as the access VLAN. And that's it. So we're going to do the same on the other switch, VLAN 13. 
and then we go to interface one slash one slash one and um, VLAN axis 13. Now we can show this command, show run config, current context, show me the context configuration, no routing, no shutdown, VLAN 13, and we can issue the command show interface brief. And that show interface brief, you can see interface one, member of VLAN 13, and it is up, and the speed is one gigabit per second. We'll begin with, uh, by creating the uh, logical interface, VXLAN say one is just a logical interface, no shutdown for this. And then we would like to source it from the loopback interface. So source IP. So when they communicate with a peer, that will be the source. It's reachable. We have looked at this. Now VNI is VXLAN network identifier, and it's a 24 bit header to identify each network. Um, and then uh, you'll do VNI zero, of course, uh, shouldn't be used as best practice. And the maximum number of VNI is 16 million, seven, 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 two, one, five. And should not also that be used. Anything in between should be fine. So as a good practice, you go uh, with um, 1013. So 1013. Now here, we're going to say, who is the VTIP peer? Who is the VTIP peer will be the loopback interface of the um, VTIP2. And then we would like to assign which VLAN. Now, we created the VNI. We said who is the peer. And the VLAN in this case is VLAN 13. So that is, so we can run, show run, current context. We can see the VNI, VLAN 13, the VTIP. We're going to do something identical to this on the VTIP2, but it's going to be 10.0.0.1, which is the other way around. Okay, that's VTIP2, so we're going to do that now. We're going to create the VLAN, as you know, and we're going to go interface 1 slash 1 slash 1, VLAN access, we're already show run current context, it's okay. Now we're going to create a new interface, and we're going to call that interface uh, VXLAN VXLAN 1 and that VXLAN 1 uh, we will configure we say no shutdown first and then going to be the source IP will be the loopback interface and then gonna, we're going to go uh, the VNI is as we've done the other one and then the VTIP peer will be 10001 and then we're going to say VLAN 13 as we've done exactly on the other switch. Show run current context. We're going to see the detail of that um, VNI and underneath would be VLAN 13 and the VTIP. And pretty much that's it. Now we go to the client. We can see it can ping its peer. That was easy to configure and that was straightforward uh, with no issues uh, whatsoever. So I can I can issue the command show interface VXLAN. You can see that VXLAN, no routing, because we have enabled routing. The peer is this, and uh, I can go more details of this. I can see that it's up. It's um, VRF default, and then the peer will be 10.0.0.2 which is the sorry, source IP 002 and the peer will be 10001. In VXLAN, the local MAC address will be learned dynamically and the remote MAC address will be learned via the VXLAN tunnel. So if you issue the command show MAC address, MAC address table, you will notice the local MAC is being learned dynamically as an interface and the other one would be will have been learned by VXLAN one tunnel. So that is the the remote client Mac, and that's the local client Mac. Now that was the configuration of the static VXLAN tunnel. We will move next to the dynamic one. 
In this part, we'll talk about dynamic or EVPM-based uh, VXLAN. Now, the dynamic and static, they are mutually exclusive. So we will remove the static VXLAN and then we will configure the dynamic VXLAN. So on this one, we're going to say no VTIP peer number two. And that will remove this static assigned, statically assigned VTIP. And here we show run current context. I'm going to issue the no command as well. So I'm going to say no this. Now we should now see the case the clients cannot bing each other. So the bing will fail if that is correctly done. It means that the client should not be able to bing each other. So you see this is stall. You can't bing each other. There's no bing here. Yeah. So we'll go back to the switches and we'll configure the BGP and whatever necessary uh, setup or steps that we need to configure. And for example, we can issue the command show interface VXLAN1. There should not be no peer. So there's nothing really and we don't see anybody. We need to configure that this one dynamically. So we're going to start with the BGP. So we're going to go to the top switch because we'll switch three now we go config and we're going to go router pgp 100 which is autonomous system and we're going to do the neighbors 10.0.0.1 and remote remote as as 100 they are the same um so they are forming ibgp in the same autonomous system 100 in this case now we're going to go going to say source update source would be the loopback interface one which is being configured on that switch as you can see now we're going to do the same the other neighbor so our neighbor here is going to be number two and the same as the other neighbor we're going to go loopback interface is the update source what we're going to do here, basically, we're going to create, because in BGP, multi-protocol, we're going to create, an, an, what we call, we call address family, layer 2 VPN, eVPN. So the way it works, we will say um, address family, um, layer 2 VPN, eVPN, and we will configure the neighbors now. So again, we're going to go neighbor 0001, that's part of the configuration. We're going to say... Um, uh, activate you are in the address family so you're going to activate the neighbor and the same applies to the other one activate now if you issue uh, that command um, and then I would like to configure this one so as part of the configuration as a root reflector so we're going to say the neighbor um, neighbor 10 0, 0, 1, uh, root reflector client and um, then the other one will be root reflector client as well it says in here um, the session with the peer which we have not yet configured yet but we configured this um, to start with and then we'll go also for the neighbor one one we would like to enable what's so called uh, send community extended so the extended community, which is part of layer 2 VPN, uh, we're going to send it to the neighbor as well. So they are able to communicate and establish EVPN. If you show run current context, you're going to see what we configured inside this one. And if I exit and again show the same command, we're going to see that we configure BGP, these are our neighbors, and EVPN family. I'm going to write all these commands for you. Um, in the comment now we're going to configure switch one and switch two so this is if you are if you like uh, the core switch the core switch itself so we're going to go now configure switches one and um, two we'll configure the BGP on um, on switch one and switch two in the same time so uh, first of all router BGP 100 and we're going to go um, the neighbor in this case would be 10 which is the switch number three remote um, 
100, which is the same. And then we'll do the neighbor update source loopback interface one. And then we will go address family um, layer 2 VPN, layer 2 VPN, AVPN. And the neighbor, in this case, remember we are root um, reflector clients 10.0.0.0.3. And then activate and then neighbor 10.0.0.3. And we're going to say send community extended. If I exit, and I show run current context. So we can copy paste basically all of that easier. We go to the switch number two and we come here. Exit, exit. We will convert just to make things easier for ourselves. And we can show run current context. That is what we have configured on this. So the three switches now are BGP peers. To complete this configuration, we need to make sure that we will configure two items, root distinguisher and root target. So we'll go on switch number one. We're going to do the same for the switch number two. You go to the VLAN 13, which is the one we wanted to. If there were other VLANs, you would do the same. Uh, we're going to make this all to the out, the in and out. Uh, first of all, we, go, we need to go in VPN and underneath we will say which VLAN is this? And then we're going to go root distinguisher auto. And then root target both in and out auto as well. And then we're going to re say redistribute um, host root. And then we can say exit. Show run current context. That's the one. We're going to copy this. And we're going to go to the next switch. Right click it. And we are done with this. So let's verify a few things. We're going to say show EVP and EVI. We can see that this is the root distinguisher being generated for the local or for the layer 2 VNI, which is the value we have configured. And the import export you can see, you're going to see on the other switch would be something identical to this one that will import and export. And the VTIP here, look at this, is one. Is dynamically selected and dynamically generated uh, without having to have um, any configuration statically. Now, if we issue the command show interface uh, VXLAN, we're going to see the interface VXLAN 1 that has this IP. The pair um, is other one, which is the loop back of the other switch on VLAN 13, AVPN. Now, if there were multiple VLANs, you would see multiple entries. Each VLAN has its own entry. Each VLAN will be uniquely identified by VNI. Now, we should, in theory, see the clients be able to bing each other. And we can look into the client now. Now clients back to enable, um, in, they are able now to bing each other. We can issue this command also, um, bing the other client, so the other client is bingable. If we issue the command show MAC address again, MAC address table, locally and here by EVPN. Do you see this? That's the MAC address of the other client and would be the same vice versa for the other one. So for example, and I can show you the MAC address here. And we can say IP config slash all. And the MAC address we have configured is 0C, look at this, 160C11. 160C11, we have learned it from EVP. So that's the end of it. Um, in this video, we have looked at how to configure VXLAN and overlay tunnel using static method and dynamic method. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching the video. Thank you.